Hello everybody, um, this is for my year 12s again. This is about inverse functions. Now an inverse function, when we're doing a calculation for an inverse function, it has two parts. We need to talk about the domain and range, and we need to talk about the rule. Now, if we have a function, we need to find the inverse. First of all, we need to find the domain and range. Now the domain for this one here, well, we know that when anything under a square root, it always must be greater than 0. So in our case, x must be greater than 1, so our domain will be from 1 up to infinity. And we know it's been moved 2 up, so our range will be from 2 to infinity. Now these swap across so that the domain of the inverse will be from 2 to infinity and the range of the inverse will be from 1 to infinity. Now the other thing that happens here is instead of f of x, we'll make it y. So we'll have y is equal to the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. Now to find the rule for the inverse, what we'll do is we'll swap x and y over. So I'll say swap x and y. So that'll mean we'll have x is equal to the square root of y minus 1 plus 2. Now, we'll take that plus 2 across to the other side, so we'll get x equals minus 2, and that'll leave us with y minus 1. Now, we'll square both sides here, and that gets rid of the square root, and if we square both sides, x minus 2 is all squared. And we'll get y is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 1. Now we know the domain and range of the inverse and the equation for the inverse. So if we write it out, the inverse will be from 2 to infinity, mapped onto a range of 1 to infinity, and the rule for the inverse is x minus 2 squared plus 1. Now the other thing you need to know about inverses is that they make mirror images of each other about the line y equals x. So I'll sketch both of these in just a second. Okay, so what we're going to do is to plot both the original function and the inverse all on one graph. Now, if we were to sketch this graph here, it's been moved across 1 in the positive direction and up 2. So its starting point will be 1 across 2 up. And because it's a square root kind of a graph, it'll come across like this. Now this parabola here, well the turning point is across a 2 and up 1. And because it's a parabola, we can sketch it like that. Now you might say, why don't we do the other half like that? Well the thing is, its domain is only defined from 2 up to infinity. So it starts at 2, and its range only starts at 1. So there's where it starts. So let me rub out this bit here. Now you can kind of see as well, that say I put in a line that was on y equals x. So y equals x. You can see that my original up here would be a mirror image of my my inverse here. See how they make a nice mirror image of each other in the line y equals x? Now this occasionally comes up in a question. They might say, where do the original and the inverse meet? Now it's easiest to do that if you take one of the um, functions, either the inverse or the original, and just make it equal to x because the inverse and the original always meet on the line y equals x. So if you were to solve this equation, you'd be doing quite well, and you'd have the, um, part, or you'd have the equation where the inverse and the original function intersect. Let's try another one. Okay, so here we have another inverse to find, and this time we're trying to find the inverse of a truncus. Now we've got to be a little bit careful here because a truncus might not necessarily be a one-to-one -one function and any function we need to find the inverse of must be a 
one-to-one -one function. So if we imagine our graph here, there'll be an asymptote at one, and there'll be two arms of the trunkers going off in different directions. Now let's refine it a little bit so we can guess what the domain and range might be. And then we'll find the rule. Now, let's take the positive part of the trunkers here. Now that will mean that the domain will be from 1 up to infinity. Now we can't include 1 in this because if we say x is equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 over 0 is undefined, so that's no good. And the range is from 0 up to infinity. We can get any y value you like, as long as it isn't 0 or negative, and heading up towards infinity. Now, if we flip these two over so we can find the domain and range of the inverse, that will be from 0 to infinity, and the range will be from 1 to infinity. Now, what I want to do is to find the rule here. Now, in place of f of x, I'll write y, like that. Now, I'll swap over, I'll swap x and y, which means everywhere there's a y, there's now an x, and everywhere there's an x, there's a y. So, let's see, what do I need to do here? Well, I'll get, I'll square root both sides. Now, if I square root both sides, there's the square root of x, square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of y minus 1 squared is y minus 1. Now, I'll flip these over and take the y minus 1 up to here, and the square root of x down to the bottom there. And I will plus 1 onto each side, so y will be equal to 1 on the square root of x plus 1. So if we had to figure out the inverse and write it out, we can say that the domain will be from 0 to infinity mapped onto a range from 1 to infinity, where the rule of the inverse is 1 over the square root of x plus 1. Now, I want to sketch both of these so I can see that they're going to be mirror images of each other around the line y equals x. Let's do that next. All right, so what we've done here is we've said, all right, well, we want to sketch this one originally. Okay, so there's like an asymptote at x equals 1. So x equals 1. And because this is a truncus, we'll go down like this. All right, now for this one here, well, we're not quite sure what y, what y equals 1 over the square root of x will be, look like, but there's a plus 1 here at the end, and you can bet your bottom dollar that will mean everything will be moved up 1. So that means there'll be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Now, if y equals the square root of x, that'll come like that. y equals 1 over the square root of x... Well, if we put y, 1 over something very small, it'll be something very big. y equals the 1 over the square root of x will look like this. So our graph will go, now let's see, go like this. Now, if I put in a line along y equals x, you can see that I have a nice mirror image of the original and the inverse. So I think I probably got it correct here. Now I could, if I liked, have done the other, um, I guess, the other side of the truncus, but I'm not going to do that here. I guess you could do that yourself if you wanted to investigate. I've done the positive or the bigger side of the truncus. You could do the smaller side. Alrighty. Well, I'll see you in class.